Good morning, Godly Play friends. I have a question for you this morning. The question is, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Well, at Hepburn International, they think it's the chicken. That's because they send chickens all over the world to people in need, and those people can use the chickens that they receive from Heifer to produce more chickens and lots of eggs. So let's start out this morning by finding out some things about chickens. Female chickens are called hens. Male chickens are called roosters. Baby chickens are called chicks. Chickens live together in small groups called flocks. There are more than 10 billion chickens in the world, maybe more than 20 billion. Chickens evolved from wild jungle fowl in Southeast Asia. Stories from China tell of people raising chickens about 4,000 years ago, but people probably began to tame wild fowl long before that. There are about 113 different breeds of chickens. Most breeds are named for the area where they were first developed. Chickens make sounds like cluck cluck, cheep cheep, and cock-a-doodle-doo. The rooster calls cock-a-doodle-doo in the early morning and in the evening. This is called crowing. Chickens are birds. All of the animals that we've talked about so far have been mammals. Birds have some basic differences from mammals. Chickens, like many birds, have feathers, beaks, combs, wattles, wings, and claws. Chickens have feathers covering most of their bodies, though many breeds of chickens do not have feathers on their legs. Roosters generally have more colorful feathers than hens. They often have long flowing tails and shiny pointed feathers on their necks and backs. Chickens don't have teeth, but they have beaks. They use the beaks to peck at the ground and pick up bits of food. They also use their beaks to clean their feathers. This is called preening. Chickens have unusual features called combs and wattles. Combs are a fleshy crest on the top of their heads, and wattles are two flaps of skin under their beaks. Combs and wattles help chickens stay cool in warm weather. This is important because chickens don't sweat. Chickens have wings, like all birds, but their wings are small and weak, so chickens aren't able to fly very far. Chicken feet look like claws with two or three toes. Their claws help them scratch on the ground and help them sit on a perch without falling off. Chickens peck and scratch at the ground to find their food. Chickens that roam about freely hunt for seeds, small plants, fruits, berries, insects, and worms to eat. On large chicken farms, the chickens are fed chicken food, which is a mixture of corn, grains, meat, fish, vitamins, and minerals. All chickens drink from a waterer. In order for a chicken to drink water, it tosses its head back and lets the water trickle down its throat. Chickens don't have a very good sense of smell or taste but they have good hearing, and they have excellent eyesight, but only during the day. At night, their eyesight is not very good, so they sleep inside chicken coops to keep them safe from predators. Chickens sleep on a perch. This is called roosting. Chickens, like all birds, lay eggs. Chickens are raised by farmers because they lay eggs and eggs are good to eat. 
Many chickens lay white eggs. Some chickens lay brown eggs. A few breeds of chickens lay green or blue eggs. A hen usually lays one egg a day. Farmers gather the eggs from the nests in the chicken coop twice a day. This makes the hen want to lay more eggs, but hens don't lay eggs in the winter. On a small farm, eggs are gathered by hand from the hen's nests. The eggs are washed and dried and kept in a refrigerator. The farmers put their extra eggs into cartons to be sold. On large farms, the eggs are rolled down the sloping floors of the chicken cages. They are washed and dried. Then they are rolled over bright lights so that workers can look through the eggshells to make sure there are no imperfections. The eggs are weighed and separated by size. Then they are packed into cartons or crates and shipped to stores. This week when I was looking for stories about Heifer International and chickens, I found quite a few stories on, on their website. But the one that I wanted to share with you is about a woman named Georgina and her family. Georgina lives in Mexico, which is just south of the United States, right here, okay? And Georgina went from family far farmer to egg enterprise. So let's hear her story. What does it look like to be a mother and thriving egg entrepreneur in northwestern Mexico? Well, early mornings in the chicken coop, receiving training, answering business calls, taking orders from customers, balancing the books, and cooking dinner for the family. And lots of love and lots of pride. All hands on deck in Georgina's family. Georgina and her husband, Rudy, pose with one of the many chicken coops. Their son, Miller, who is five, loves holding the hens. And their son, Aldair, who is 12, helps dry their coffee crop in the sun. Rudy proudly poses with one of his young mango trees. Georgina spends her early mornings in the chicken coops, stirring the litter to prevent disease and feeding the chickens. Aldair enjoys helping his mother collect eggs. Georgina is proud that her eggs meet the high standards of Tox Restaurant. Tox is a restaurant chain in Mexico. Heifer poultry technician Ivan Gonzalez checks in with Georgina and her chickens and helps her with accounting. Each of Georgina's eggs must weigh two ounces, be organic, and have consistent free-range flavor. From farm to table, Georgina's eggs are served to customers of Tox Restaurant. Georgina, she's a mother and an entrepreneur. She seizes each day with the joy that erupts when your life lifts from poverty to plenty. Hi everyone. Since we've done so much talking about chicken and eggs, my husband, Mr. Jim, got a good idea to show some of the delicious ways that you can cook eggs. So we're gonna try to make hard boiled, poached, scrambled, sunny side up, and over easy, all right? Now for hard boiled, you put the egg with the shell on in the pan, fill the pan with water so the eggs are covered, and then turn the water on until the water boils. It looks like the water's boiling on this one. Once the water's boiling, you put the lid on, Turn the heat down a bit and then cook it for about, I'm going to say, 
18 minutes. Oops, one minute. Let me get my timer going right. Okay. So now the timer's set on the hard boiled eggs. Now on the poached eggs, I'm going to show sunny side up first. Okay, these are sunny side up. That'll be sunny side up, and that'll be over easy. I'll just flip it over. Sunny side up and over easy are both fried eggs, but on sunny side up, we leave the yolk facing up, and on over easy, we flip it and cook it on the other side too. Now, for poached eggs, we boil the water, but we don't put the egg in there yet until the water's boiling. So when the water starts boiling on this pan, we'll get uh, poached going. Let's move it down just a little bit more on. It's been boiling, I turned it down. Yeah, on hard boiled. This is where you can have it. Okay. 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 All right. Or this cream. This one's getting ready for poached once the water boils. Alright, once the water boils, it's already boiled. We make the eggs, we make the water swirl and then plop the egg right into the swirling water. We cracked the egg first and took the shell off. All right, do we need to know how long to cook it for? Well, about five minutes. Okay, we'll have to watch the timer. Mm -hmm. It's already going for the hot oils. Right, my cookbook says, for poached eggs, reduce heat to low and cook eggs for three to five minutes. Okay, I'm gonna flip it over. Okay. That's the over easy. You better get a big plate to put all these eggs on. Okay, the last one we're going to get ready are the scrambled eggs. How many eggs are we going to scramble? Three. Okay. Okay, the only one of these that we, we're cooking with the shell still on the egg is the hard boiled. For all the other kinds, we took the egg out of the shell. There's the over easy. Oh, looks good. And there's the sunny side up. Can you tell why it's called sunny side up? There's a beautiful egg yolk that looks just like the sun. Okay, scramble getting started. On the scrambled eggs, we beat the eggs all together. So the yellow part and the white part all got combined. And 
as it cooks. You stir it and chop it and scramble it. By the way, Mr. Jim and I are having eggs for dinner. So keep that where it is. Get the toast. Try the slot, it's most fun. Poached eggs taste good on toast. And once it's ready. Oh, that came out with a nice shape. Okay. There's poached. Is the one that doesn't look bright yellow. And sunny side up is the one that does look bright yellow. So we're going to eat these now while the hard boiled keeps cooking. And then once hard boiled done cooking, we'll look and see what it looks like and how we can eat it. Back in a minute. Okay, when the hard boiled eggs are done cooking, you take them off the heat, and then I usually bring them over to the sink, leave them in the pan, and just run cold water on them a little bit. The cold water helps to set the yolk. And I can drain out some of the hot water and just leave the cold water running on the cooked egg. Okay, let's put it in a dish and then see if we can crack them open and see what they look at, what a hard boiled egg looks like on the inside. a solid white egg without the shell. Should we cut it in half so we can see? Um... What it looks like. And there's the yolk on the inside. Mmm. Yeah. I like hard boiled. That's one of my favorites. Okay, delicious dinner full of eggs. Hello, everybody. It's Miss Helen here. Today I've been given the task of trying to find a Bible story about chickens. 
There are not a lot of Bible stories about chickens, actually. However, there is a verse that mentions chickens, and it's actually a pretty well-known verse. I bet a lot of people actually know it. It's in the book of Luke, and it's when Jesus is getting ready to go to Jerusalem for Passover. And he says, he's talking about how much he loves Jerusalem and the people of Jerusalem. And he says, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, but you were not willing. I have always really liked that verse, partly because of the image. Now, an image is sort of like a picture in your head. And can't you just see that? Can you see a mother chicken, a mother hen, with her wings and all the little chickens underneath, and she's keeping them warm and safe? It's a very beautiful image, I think. But the other thing that I always think about when I read this verse is the fact that Jesus wanted to take care of Jerusalem and all the people in there, but they wouldn't let him. And that makes me think about how important it is to be able to choose. People can make good choices or they can make bad choices. For example, let's say that eating an apple is good and eating a plate of cookies is bad, or maybe at least not as good as eating an apple. Now, if someone gave me this plate and said, pick which apple you want to eat. Well, that's a choice. I could eat this apple, or I could eat this apple, but it's not really a choice between something that's good and something that's maybe not quite as good. If on the other hand, someone said, would you rather eat an apple or would you rather eat a pile of Girl Scout cookies? Then I have a choice. I could choose something good, like an apple, or I could choose something not quite as good, like a plate of Girl Scout cookies. And I think that God always lets us make choices. We can make good choices, or we can make not so good choices. So I think that's something you might want to think about in the next week and think about how you could make good choices or better choices. And I hope that that's something you'll get in the habit of doing. All right. Well, I will see you next week. Bye.